Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. My season, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. To be blessed. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ah, bless your God. Oh, bless your God.
is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's get ready to receive the man of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, just raise your hands this morning. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, the Spirit of God is so strong already. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just love you. We glorify you, Lord, and we just say thank you, Lord. Come on, just say it in your spirit. Come on, pray in the spirit. Just say thank you, Jesus. Come on, VLCC, you got it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you this day, Lord. We bless you this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, just give Jesus some praise this morning. Come on, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, greet your neighbor. Say, neighbor, it's time. Today is your day in Jesus' name. Lord, this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, get out of your seats. Come on, we have a high expectancy in this church. Want to welcome everyone that's joining us online. God bless you. God's got a word for you this morning in the name of Jesus. He's going to shake you right where you are in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. For you are the great I am. You, Father God, Holy Ghost, have your way today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. 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 How many of you blessed today? God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. So come on, make sure you get yourself together. Get yourself ready because God's about to do something to you today. I guarantee you, you're not going to leave the same. Amen. Come on, if you agree, shout amen. Amen. Come on, give it up for the man of God that's about to give you the word that you're going to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, hello. Glory to God. Good morning. Are you blessed this morning? Uh, somebody shout, Good morning. Uh, you know, good morning. It's a new day. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're excited to be here. Thank the Lord for what he's doing. Ah, <laughs> ah the presence of the Lord is in this place. <laughs> Y'all know how to invite Jesus. <laughs> Y'all know how to invite Jesus. <laughs> you know how to get his attention, amen? I said you know how to get his attention. Thank you, Lord. Well, praise God. Lift your hands to heaven, Father. We just bless you today. We give you glory and honor. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're about to do, God. We open our heart to you. 
Oh, Father, we open our heart to you. Thank you for revelation, oh God. Too much information, but we need revelation. Thank you for revelation, oh God. Let today be a day of revelation. Let today be a day of encounter with your word and your spirit, oh God. Let, like the disciples said, they said, what we have heard, we have seen. And what we have seen, we have handled. Let that be our testimony. As the apostles went through the city saying, ah, what we heard, we saw. And what we saw, we held with our own hands. Let today be a day of manifestation. That what they have heard, they're seeing. And what they're seeing, they will handle. Let them handle their miracle today. I said, let them handle their miracle today. Let them handle their deliverance today. Let them not only hear about it, God. Let them see it and handle it today, oh God. Let their financial freedom be handled today. Let their victory be handled today. Not just heard about, not just seen, but manifested in the natural. Let their house be a house of freedom. Let their children be a children of freedom, oh God. Let their money be money of freedom, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all receive that? Yeah. Amen. Where, where's my brother from, two, was it Tuesday? Is that you? Why, why I got to hear about it four days later? Come here. Hurry up. Come here. I'm going to mess with y'all. See, because here, here's what I learned. When I leave, I hear like a week or two weeks later, oh, there was a miracle. There was this. There was that. Now, I'm thinking, what happened to you? Because I asked you what happened to you. You didn't say You were like, <laughs> I said, what happened? And then I hear something that it was like uh, something. What happened? It was a uh, nerve that was running from the tendon of the uh, wrist up to the elbow. Okay. And was making it swell up. It was swollen. Yes. It was swollen, and it was just, the elbow was like the size of a small orange. Now, what was interesting, when I looked at you, I thought it was gauze, <laughs> like a big ball of gauze. Yeah. But it was, was it? No, but, I mean, it was actually swollen from right there. It was swollen. The gauze was just holding it firm to keep it from, you know, compressing it to keep it from swelling more. And what happened when the Lord touched you? Oh, the pain went away, the swelling went away. But, but man of God, let, let me tell you something, Come though. I'm going to tell you something. The power, I mean, the swelling and everything, everything went away. When, when did it go away? It went away that night, Tuesday night. It went away. Now, Saturday morning, I wake up. I had back surgery in 2011. All right. Never had any, any other issues with it. Saturday morning, I wake up, take my wife's vehicle to get the brakes worked on. Pain hit me again like I did in 2011. Uh, I couldn't bend down. Uh, I couldn't move. I had uh, to lay on the floor. Uh, she had to help me up off the floor. Uh, and I told her, I said, Devil, you'll lie. Come on. I now. mean, because the man of God prayed for me and I believed it. Oh, my, my arm was totally, it, it went away. <laughs> now all of a sudden, it's trying to jump on my back again. 2011, I'm like, you crazy. I just, I just started praising the Lord. Come on. And this morning, oh, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. One touch of heaven yes, sir. Yes, sir. can break you out yes, for multiple encounters, <laughs> multiple freedom. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. No, I, 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 I'll be honest with you. I bless the Lord. Come on. I'll be honest with you. Mr. Carter, I was a little disturbed that it took four days to find out what happened when it happened that night. Don't be like that. If the Lord touch you, because he's going to touch you. If the Lord deliver you, because he's going to deliver you. If the Lord minister to you, he's going to minister you. You better testify. When I say what happened, you go, oh, this is what happened. Because it's happened. Amen. Amen? Somebody say it's happened. And it's happening right now. Freedom belongs to me. I dare you to snatch your freedom. I said freedom belongs to me. Freedom belongs to me. If Jesus paid the price for my freedom, I take my freedom. Are you here? Amen. All right. Be seated for a moment. Let, let, us, let us cut this thing back open. And get into some things. This is in 1 Kings chapter 12 I want to go to. If you've been following with us, we've been talking about, you know, altars in your life. Amen. And some things are not your fault, but they are your fight. I said some things are not your fault, but they are your fight. And you got to choose to fight. The Bible says fight that good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. It's not like we, we fight in the world, but it's a spiritual warfare. And we have to learn how to take up our weapons 
You know, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are mighty and powerful. The question is, why would he give us weapons if he already fixed everything? I'm sorry. I'm, let me help somebody. Why would he give you a weapon if, if, if the enemy, he was defeated? Yeah, he was defeated. But doesn't he don't know he was defeated. He pretends like he wasn't defeated. You know, and so you need weapons. If you didn't have, you know, Jesus said, ah, don't worry about it. I got it. It's finished. It's over. Then you would all be in your mansion right now, driving your Rolls Royce right now. The doctors, don't get mad at me. I'm not, I'm not knocking doctors. Don't get me wrong, but they would be out of business. I'm sorry. It's true. You know, if it was, if it was finished, like we said, it's finished. It was finished in one realm, but we got to work it out of that realm. I said it was finished in one realm, but we've got to get it out of that realm into this realm. Yes. Amen. That's why we got to participate with the word. We got to participate with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say participate. participate. We, we can't just show up like spectators. Uh -huh. We can't. Oh, I'm a Christian and a spectator. You can't be a spectator and be delivered. Uh -oh. Oh, you cannot tell your neighbor you can't be a spectator and be delivered. You can't be a spectator. You know, spectators. Let me help you, spectator. Oh, we went to eat one time. It's so good to see y'all. God bless. It's so good to see y'all. We went to go eat somewhere one time, you know. And, man, of God, we, we, we were, it was a restaurant, you know. So they had all the, the game on. I guess Houston was playing. I don't know. I don't, I don't get time too much to watch football, basketball, or whatever. But we, we were walking through, and the restaurant, we, it was like, well, let's go get our food. So we were walking through the restaurant. There's one fella standing at the TV. Go ahead and go. And he's coaching. I said, look at this guy. He's coaching the team. They winning because he's coaching. I said, the team winning because he's hollering and coaching the team on the TV. I said, that sounds like Christians. Ain't even in the game. Let me talk about That sounds like they ain't even in the game. They spectators, but they coaching as a spectator. God can't even hear them. Team don't even know what's going on. They're on the outside looking in, hollering. Uh, somebody say it's time to be free. Time to be in the game where you got your hand on the ball and you running that ball and you say this is mine, it's mine and ain't nobody gonna get it. We can no longer be spectators. We must be participators. But to participate, we got to know that there is a coach. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. And there's plays. Somebody say plays. The word of God is already road mapped out and the coach shows you through the word. Uh, what game? What, what team? What, what the enemy doing on the other side? You know, it's interesting. I don't know why I'm on this, but I'll be right here. It, it's interesting. They always show you the other team playing. I don't know. Y'all ever play sports? They always do the real, you know, they show the reels of the other team who you're about to face. We come to church, we don't know anything about the other team. We don't even know who we're fighting. So when we get on the court, everybody's jersey's the same. We don't know where to pass the ball. Who's against us? Who's with us? Where's the goal? Which way do we go? Do we shoot that way? Do we shoot that way? Do we run the ball this way or that way? Because we're all wearing the same jersey. What's going on? When we don't have identifiers, we don't know what we're dealing with. Are you with me? So there are spiritual identifiers that we must recognize. Oh, we say the fruits of the Spirit. Somebody say the fruits of the Spirit. Are really the characteristics of Jesus. When the Bible says we should have the fruits of the Spirit, that is the character of Jesus, which are identifiers to your teammates. Hmm. <laughs> are you here? So we must understand these things and recognize there is an enemy who looks to set up things in your life. And if he's not identified, if he's not, no, don't take this the wrong way. If he's not recognized, I'm not talking about elevated recognition. I'm talking about watch out. We drove on the way over here. There was a snake on the road. I don't think my wife saw it. I saw it. It was ran over. Did you see the snake? You see, I saw the snake. I said, ah, enemy. But somebody crushed his head. Somebody said that was me. <laughs> Ran right over the sucker. Oh, where people will run, say, oh, it's a snake. No, that's the enemy. Run him over. Don't run from him. Run to him. Don't run from him. Run to him. 
When you see your enemy, run to your enemy. Don't run from your enemy. One thing you discover about animals, if you run from them, they'll chase you. But if you run to them, See, we got this mentality in church called the lamb mentality. I said the lamb mentality. They were all sheeps, you know, gone astray, and we're all sheeps prepared for the slaughter. We're all sheeps prepared for the shearing. But we never recognized that Jesus was the lamb, but that lamb was already slain, crucified already cut open and offered to God and he rose up not a lamb somebody say he rose up as a oh yeah yeah uh, somebody say it go ahead and say it like you mean it he rose up like a what like a lion so now we are not part of the tribe of sheep oh don't worry we're gonna get here to the altars I just gotta lay a little work here we're not raised up as lambs. <laughs> we come in as lambs, but we are changed into lions. We no longer should be sheep. At birth, we're sheep. But once we get some meat, we change from sheep to lions because sheep don't eat meat, they eat grass. So when we keep feeding grass, we keep sheep. When we start throwing meat, they transform. And they become part of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. And I don't know about you, but lions, when they just sleep, they scare things. I said, when you lay your head down, you just... Mm, mm. They say, oh, yeah. every animal, look, is he sleep? I don't know, man. He's... He breathing. Let me walk back. I stepped up on a lion. Every devil goes, oh, my God, it's a lion. As he sleep, I don't care. He might be asleep. He might be awake. But if he just open his eyes, I'm gone. This is the mentality we must have. But if we don't have identifiers, if we don't have things in our life to help us understand where, who is this enemy that we deal with, how did he even affect our life? How does he still affect our life as a born-again believer? Amen. So, you know, being a lion is different than being a lamb. Hmm. Are you with me? Somebody say, shake yourself. Shake yourself. So what's, what's the part of the transformation? How do, we, how do we transform? How do we change? The Bible says he's changing you, right? Changing you into the image of his son. What's the image of his son? The lion. That's the image of his son. The lion. <laughs> the lamb part is already done. The lion is the next phase. Amen. So he's transforming us. But part of that transformation is to understand what is taking place and what is happening in the realm of the spirit. Amen. We are no longer carnal, the Bible says. We're no longer of the natural man. Though we're here, we're aliens. Uh, somebody say, I'm an alien. Yeah, you know, they got shows looking for aliens. Just come to church. You look for aliens. Just come to church. We all aliens. Y'all want to sleep today, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're all, we're all aliens. So, you know, you're looking for aliens. You're supposed to come to the house of God where people have been transformed. Amen. And become aliens as new creatures in Christ Jesus. Amen. Old things pass away. Everything becomes new. But then we're in a warfare that the enemy wants to keep the old on you. Huh? He wants to keep the old on you. I love the fact that Jesus said something very, very vital. He said, Satan has nothing in me. Huh? In other words, I haven't eaten any bread of Satan. I haven't eaten any food of the devil. So there's nothing in me. There's no altars on my life. There's no hooks in me. There's nothing that I need to be cleansed from because I'm already the clean lamb. But I must go to the slaughter. I must go to the altar and be offered. Amen. And that's what he did for us. But now we're on the other side of that. The resurrection. Amen. We're on the side of the resurrection. But in our lives, we see the thing with thing with Jesus. He came how supernaturally. He was not born of a man. Everything in our DNA comes from the father. The mother is just a carrier of the child. In fact, the blood doesn't even come from the mother, though she's tied to the baby. So when Jesus shows up, he's the pure lamb. Are you with me? The woman was just a carrier. 
There was no DNA transferred from Mary to Jesus. There was nothing. She was just an incubator. This is what we must understand. So when Jesus came out, he came out the perfect lamb. There were no altars in his life, which is why no man can take my life. I must give it up. No man can take my money. I got to give it. Because uh, there's no altars to poverty in my life. Oh, Are you here? And so Jesus, being the perfect lamb, came in the incubator of the woman and was born of the spirit. So he was the purest of the purest. Are you here? So when he came out, there was nothing that could keep him. This is why he rebuked his disciples. This is why he rebuked the Pharisees. He spoke against. This is why he flipped the tables, right? This is why he formed a whip and whipped because that was part of righteousness. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why he, he ran some people off and gathered some people. It was part of righteousness. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus didn't do that. He was just a good pastor. No, he won't. He ran some folk off and he gathered some other folk. That's part of righteousness. He was setting some things straight, setting some things in order. Amen. But he knew that he had to die. Why? Because there was an altar that was made in the garden between Satan and Adam. There was an altar created. This is why when they come out of the garden, he, he, he takes them out. He, God, what does he do? He takes a lamb. It doesn't say it in scripture, but it don't have to say it. You better know what he used. He didn't use no goat. <laughs> he, he didn't look around and say, give me a giraffe. Let me cover Adam and Eve in giraffe skin. No, no, no. He said, where's the lamb that I made? Bring, bring the lamb. Let me, let, me, let me sacrifice the lamb and cover Adam and Eve because fig leaves don't work. You know what I'm saying? Tea leaves don't work, y'all. <laughs> so... There was the beginning of breaking the power by another altar already. But it wasn't sufficient enough. Are you with me? Because the deal that Satan and Adam made went deeper than what a lamb could handle. Am I helping somebody yet? In other words, if, if, this is why they consistently had a sacrifice. Because it wasn't deep enough to, to get to the root of the trouble that took place when Adam sinned and created an altar of sin in the garden. It wasn't deep enough with just a lamb to cover them. It was a representation that your sin is covered. That the altar of sin is covered but not broken. Amen. This is why he said this is my body. It is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody help me in here. This is my body. It is. Say it again. This is my body. It is. See, when we take and receive communion, we don't understand why it's broken. Why does this body have to be broken? Because the altars must be broken. And you can only break an altar by a greater breaking. Something greater must come in and take place to break that other altar. Amen. It starts when we receive Christ. Are you with me? The power of sin is broken. But doesn't mean that we are, I mean, because think about it. Let's think, let's be honest. We got to, I believe, man of God, in church, we should just be honest. And I think a lot of church, not here. I look at y'all, y'all say, I smile, y'all, y'all, y'all honest. But I think in some places, we just so fake and so dishonest that we don't hear truth and we're never delivered. So we live a life of just, you know, you know, we just, yeah, we're good. <laughs> uh, but, but, but we can't do that to a prophet, man. He already know. He look at you and say, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me you're good, you liar. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and Holy Ghost people, you can't hide. You can't hide. But, 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 but I know one thing. If, if it was only to receive Christ, then when you receive Christ, naturally everything else would just be all right. Come on now, wave at me. <laughs> Now, we've been saved for a little while. We know everything ain't been all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. No, you know. Why? Well, there is some type of warfare to keep your victory from happening. 
Amen. And my question is, where does that power come from? Listen, if the devil is defeated, if he's defeated, somebody say he is defeated. We know that truth. The Bible says that Jesus made an open show of Satan. Open show. Defeated all the, the armies of Satan and the power of Satan and the foolishness. of Defeated it all. Somebody say all. All the power of the enemy has been defeated. Uh, you believe that? You know that. Then my question is, how do witches fly? I said, but witches don't fly. Oh, you ain't seen no video. Lord Jesus, let me help you. <laughs> how do people, oh, y'all mess with somebody. How do people live under the water? Through the power of witchcraft. If the power of Satan been defeated. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. I say, we, America Church, we don't hear this because everything's candy coated. We don't really get into it, so we keep everything on the shelf, candy uh, when the Bible says, you know, you have power and authority over all the enemy. Hold on a second. He ain't got no power. Why do you need power? There's something we're missing. Some kind of clarity we need. Amen. So now that you're a Christian, amen, filled with the Holy Ghost, what is the Holy Ghost for? To lead you into all the truth. To reveal truth to you. To let you know, ah, I'm in you, God of heaven and earth, live and dwell in you. Now rule and reign with power. But you cannot rule and reign when you got altars in your life that don't belong to God. This is the issue that you find throughout the Old Testament. Why did they rule for a little while and then that righteous king die and an unruly king come up and build an altar? And once he built an altar, they start losing power. Have you ever thought about that? What's wrong with these people? Y'all, anybody read the Old Testament? You say, what's wrong with these people? My God, don't they know? I mean, you had, you know, Gideon. Gideon ruled, man, bam, we read that. He came in, defeated all the armies. Boy, they had peace. And then so I think his sons woke up, or somebody woke up, and they, they went right back to the devil. What the world? And what happened? They were oppressed again. Here come the enemy, just oppressing them. Uh, I mean, in, in somebody say in samples, examples, uh, types and shadows. Why? Because they built altars to other gods. Uh, so an altar would create you to be powerless. Let me just help you. The greater your altar before God, <laughs> the less the power of the altar of Satan against you. I know somebody felt that. I know somebody. That means the better and higher you consecrate your life to God, the more authority is released in the realm of the spirit to you. Because nowadays Christians don't think they should live a, a, a clean life. Well, that's the problem. When you don't live a clean life, you have altars to the devil. And then we want stuff to take place. And you have the power of two altars. But the animal you feed is the animal that grows. Let me, talk, let me talk up here. The animal you feed is the animal that grows. You know, I got two dogs. And I have to separate them. Or my wife or my children, we got to separate them because one will just eat everything. We're like, stop. Get away. Let the other one eat. And you notice. You notice when the other one ain't been eating. The ribs start coming out. And we already know who ate the food. You don't even have to ask, like, how come you went? Oh, I already know. He got to it before you got to it. So we have to separate them. You know what I'm saying? Because the other one will just eat it all up. Ain't that like the enemy? I said, ain't that like the enemy? Which when you look in the Old Testament, you find that the Hebrews lived on a different piece of property. God separated them. And then he consecrated them. And then he covered them. And when he consecrated them and covered them, he broke the power of Pharaoh. I said he broke the power of Pharaoh. Pharaoh's power be, was because he worshipped uh, the gods of the heavens. Uh, they had all kinds of gods. The reason they had the power they had is because they worshipped demonic spirits. We don't think that today. Let me help you. Well, God, I really want to get into scripture, but I don't think I'm going to have time to get all through this. Let me just, can I just hit a couple things? Holy Ghost, help me. 
Let, let's look at first Kings. Just follow with me real quick. First Kings chapter 12, verse 25. Uh, I want to just for the sake of time, I have a lot of scripture I want to cover, but it's very important that we get uh, some of these things in. Yeah. Uh, it says, then Joab, jo, 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 uh, mm -hmm, this fella, <laughs> built Shechem in the mountains of Ephraim and dwelt there. Uh, don't get mad at me. I wasn't born in, in this land. I was born in America. We, we, don't, we don't name people that I don't know. Some, I don't know. Anyway. And also, he went out from there and built this face. And, and this guy said in his heart, now the kingdom, y'all can help me. Don't worry, y'all. Y'all Bible scholars. You can help me. Verse 26, and, and Jerome, Jer 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 what'd you say, Jerome? How about Jerome? Jerome said in his heart, now the kingdom may return to the house of David. Watch this. Now the kingdom may return to the house of David. What does the house of David represent? Uh, the place in which Jesus comes from. Uh, the place in which Jesus is going to take his position. Uh -huh. The place in which the Lamb of God is going to come out and sit on the throne and rule. Somebody say rulership. Whoa. Somebody say dominion. dominion. Uh, so the kingdom of David or the house of David must be set up for dominion. Watch. If these people go up, they, they says now the kingdom may return to the house of David if, somebody say if, if these people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of these people will what? Turn back to their Lord. Look at this fella. He's like, man, if these people go to church and sacrifice unto God, their heart's going to be turned back to God and I'm going to lose my position of power. Can I help somebody? There are people in power. Now, don't look at everybody and be like, this guy's in power and that guy's in power because of something. Because there's only two powers in the realm. Yeah. God's power and Satan's power. Yeah. You're caught in the middle. Oh, yeah. There are people that are set up in power that are demonic. Yeah. And there are other people who are set up by God to break the demonic. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm Y'all going to get mad at me. It's okay. I love you. I can say it because I'm, I'm caught between two races. I'll be honest, I am. I, I got all colors in me, so don't get mad. That's why I preach to every different culture. I, got, I, I found out I got, I got Chinese in me, too, I think. We got Chinese people coming to the church, or Oriental people. I say glory to God. Whatever's in me, just come on. <laughs> but there's a reason why there's a power struggle in America today, because there is enemies who have been placed in higher authority rulerships. And God has given us an opportunity uh, I know, don't get mad at me. Please don't get mad at me. I'm not asking who you voted for, but I'm telling you, uh, pay attention to the realm of the spirit. Uh, yeah, I get people run out of church when I say stuff like this. Because I'm not talking about that. That's my wife. <laughs> I, I, not her. She didn't run out. She got to handle some business. Are you with me? But always in the Bible, because people say don't bring politics in church. Well, read your Bible. Read your Bible. <laughs> read your Bible. This is King's. This is rulers, this is authorities, and they're doing wickedness to keep people out of church. Yeah. You know, I was really honored to see our president, he's our president, bring all these mighty men and women of God to pray. Yeah. Not in some other place, but in the White House. Yeah. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad. Please just tell, tell your neighbor, don't get mad. I'm not, it's nothing personal, it's business. Yeah. But when somebody else brought all the, the imams into the White House to pray, I was kind of concerned. Oh, yeah, I know it's quiet. What is that doing? Why do you bring imams into the White House? You are building an altar. I'm about to open some eyes. It's nothing personal. It's nothing political. It's spiritual. Everything we deal with is on the realm of the spirit. Amen. So we've got to open up our heart. So here he says, what if now the kingdom of God may return to the house of David? Verse 27, if these people, how is it going to return to the house of David? If these people go and offer unto God into Jerusalem, their hearts will be turned back to God and they're going to rebel against me. Why? Because he had set up wicked things. Oh, uh, you know, are you okay? Are you with me? And it said, then these heart of the people will turn back to the Lord and Rehoboam, the king of Judah. And they will kill me and go back to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Therefore, the king asked advice. What? Made two calves of gold and said to the people, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't think you heard this. He said, I don't want you to go to Jerusalem and offer to God. Let me build you some gods. Why? Because if you go there, I'll be revealed. Huh? And you'll kill me. And I'll lose my power. I'll lose my influence over you. I'll lose my control over your life. See, something about altars, they are sent to control and dictate to you whether you know it or not. Do you know where altars alter you? Tell your neighbor, you better discover where altars alter you. Somebody say, not in your spirit. Because they can't touch your spirit. But 90% of Christians are not led by their spirit. 90% of Christians are not led by their spirit. They're led by their soul. Altars are set up to alter your soul. In the soul is choice, is decision making. It decides whether you're going to follow God or not follow God. Your spirit can be screaming, ah, I need the Lord. And your soul be like, I want to, you fill in the blank. I ain't going to say nothing. Uh, sometimes I get in trouble when I say something. Uh, you're like, how's he calling me out? I ain't calling nobody out. I'm just, I'm, I'm what I see in the spirit. Amen. Not here, though. Tell your neighbor, not here. Sometimes we're influenced by people online, so don't worry. Just smile. He said, therefore, the king asked advice, made two calves of gold and said to the people, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel. Watch this. Which brought you up from the land of Egypt. Wait a minute. What? Oh, hold on a second. He just altered your story. Now, how did he alter your story? Because somebody in that day made an altar. The same altar. But he made two. He made two of them. Aaron made one bull out of gold. This brother made two, said, here are your gods. These are the ones that brought you out. Don't you remember? Didn't you remember? Because it's in your ancestral DNA. Uh, it's in your soul. That these are the gods. This is the image that Aaron put before you and said, here is your God. While Moses was on the mountain. Ooh, somebody help me, Lord. So it's in your soul. He, he, he was putting two images now of the one image that Aaron built to say, these are the gods that brought you out of Egypt. In other words, oh, yeah, it was, it was, your, it was your wisdom. Huh? That made you your money. It was your intelligence that got you that good job. Ah. It was it was that you know you hard work that got you the promotion. You know. It was luck that healed you. You know. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Come on, let me let me help somebody. Are you with me still? So this man right here. So he didn't lose his power. He set up two altars that traced back to the time that they left Egypt. Where did they, where did they get that from? Somebody said they got it from Egypt. So even though they left Egypt, they still had Egypt in their soul. So they automatically were good with a golden cow. Because it brought nourishment, or not nourishment, you know, what do you call that? Uh, 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 a good, happy feeling to their soul. We can see our God now. That's the word, yeah. It satisfied their soul. Thank you for helping me preach in here. I appreciate it. I'm not concerned. I'm not a one-man show, you know what I mean? It's a group effort. <laughs> So it nourished their soul. It satisfied their soul to have this bull. But it was just a bunch of bull. That's all it was. Now he built two of them. And it connected back to the one bull, which connected back to their life in Egypt. Can you see the altars transferring through generation to generation to generation through wicked people? All because of power. Now don't get mad at me because it doesn't matter. Whether it's in church, because this is, this would be considered church. 
These are, these are children of God, aren't they? That's not children of the world. That's children of God. They act like children of the world, but they're children of God. So that's in the things of God. Somebody's building other gods. We better be watchful. I said we better be watchful. Uh, because whatever nourishes your soul and doesn't change it is another altar. When we want an itching ear message, it is another altar. Uh, there was somebody in the word that said, though he slay me, I'll serve him. Uh, we don't hear that in a Christianity today. Oh, no, we don't hear that in Christianity. Why? Because we got too many other altars. The biggest altars we have today in the church is humanism. Humanism is the altars of the church today. All about your feel good. Because everything about the cross ain't feeling good. Uh, but at the cross, at the cross, come on. Uh, where I see the light. It changed me from darkness to light. From no power to power. No dominion to dominator. Uh, uh, Take my authority. Sickness can't have me. Disease can't have me. Poverty can't have me. Uh, foolishness can't have me. Trouble can't have me. Strife can't have me. Uh, fear can't have me. Ooh, I feel like we ain't going to get through this. Boy. This might be a whole month and a half. Huh? Amen. So he said, hear your gods, O uh, uh, oh Israel, which brought you up from the land of Egypt. Amen. Let's go on verse, verse 13, or chapter 13, excuse me, verse 1. Now that we understand now what was taking place, do you understand? Somebody didn't want to lose their power. So they were setting up false altars. Listen, this is not just in leaders. This is in Christian people in general. Hmm? Just in general. We have to watch for these things, amen? It says, verse 1, and behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to do what? Burn incense. Oh, he looked like a good little Christian. Then he cried out. The man of God cried out. I, I don't know about you. We, we don't have enough men of God crying out. I'm here to stir somebody to start crying out. We don't, we don't have enough people crying out to God crying out against the things in the realm of the spirit. I'm not talking about facing people naturally. I'm talking about in the realm of the spirit. If they come to you, then you can face them. But you don't have to go to them. You can just cry out in the realm of the spirit. Curse every demonic force. It said, then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord. Huh? How? By himself? Mm -mm. Not by himself. Don't ever fight a battle by yourself. Don't ever try to break a power by yourself. He said, by the word of the Lord. Are you with me? I know, I know we don't have it on the screen, but you got to keep it in front of you. Amen. He said, and uh, all, he said, then he cried out against the altar. Who did he cry out against? Oh, say it again. The altar. the altar. Why? Because the altar was the place of power. We must understand this. We got to understand these things. We are Christian. We are believers. Are you with me? We are filled with power and authority. The Bible says the devil is under your foot. But with so much we deal with, he doesn't look like he's under our foot. Why? Because there's altars that must be broken. Are you with me? They must be broken. We've had to break altars in our own life. Me and my wife, we've had to break the altars of what was placed in our lives by our surroundings. Amen. This is why I coined the phrase, it's not your fault, it's your fight though. Huh? 99% of the things you do are because of your environment. So it's really you're just enacting what you've been shown. Until you're shown something else, you'll only keep doing what you know. You, you, thank you, sister. Say, help me preach. You're a product of your environment. You understand me? So if you've been brought up around false altars, false gods, that's what you're going to be. Huh? Until somebody shows you the real. Somebody say, I want the real. So he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord. In other words, he didn't go pray at this altar. He spoke against this altar. Now, the thing we must understand, that's the place of meeting. Somebody say place of meeting. Always remember that cross was an altar. 
Jesus said, I'm the door. Guess what? God hung the door on an altar. Let me say that one more time. Jesus said, I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. I am, I am the door. And God stuck all that on the cross. Ooh, excuse me. On the cross, on the altar. Somebody say the altar. On the altar. On the altar. He stuck the door on the altar. How come he put How come he didn't put the door in the temple? Think about it. I mean, if it's his son, why didn't he sacrifice him where the veil was? Because the veil is where you went into the Holy of Holies. Wave at me if you're all right. How come he didn't put the door at the Holy of Holies? He stuck it on an altar. And it wasn't just any altar. It was where the Romans sacrificed people to their gods. It wasn't just a place of punishment. It was a place that they chose. Okay, it's like this today. We cover up stuff in plain sight. We cover up things in plain sight. Are you with me? We do. And the Romans were like, ah, we're just going to whip everybody that, that rebels and we'll take them and sacrifice them to our gods and we're going to hang them high. Yeah. It wasn't just a place of torture. It was, a, it was a place of both natural and spiritual. That was, it was called Golgotha, the, the place of the skull. Well, if I say skull, what is that? That's the place of death. Eh? And witches always got to have some kind of skull. Am, am I all right? Give me five. Witches always got to have a skull. Because it represents their God, the God of death. So what did they do? They hung Jesus, the door. Somebody say the door. The door. On an altar, which is a place of meeting. It's a place of meeting. In which God's going to meet you at that altar. Amen. So the altar is a place of meeting. It's a place of empowerment. It's a place of transfer. Okay, when we came in, the door was open. We came into a different place. Are you with me? When you walked in the door, you left the outside, you came inside. That's Jesus. He's the door. When you leave the outside, you come into the inside. You come inside of Christ. Amen. But there's things still outside trying to get you. It's all right. I know. Well, shoot, man. I know. We know. Oh, Lord, we know. I used to ask the Lord, what in the world am I fighting? Uh, uh, don't get mad at me, Mom. I said, my Lord, what we fighting? He said, ancient spirits. I said, ancient spirits. He said, yeah, stuff your family never dealt with. And because they didn't deal with them, guess who got to deal with them? And if you, deal, if, if you don't, your children going to have to. I said, I don't want my children to fight my ancient spirits that came through my family lineage. Why am I going to let them fight something that I, if I know better, I'll deal with it. And if I deal with it, they ain't got to deal with it. That's why they can grow up in peace, because I killed that devil of strife. Somebody say, help me, Lord. So what happened? He cried out against the altar. Why? It was the altar that was keeping this man in power. The altar. He built the gods and said, here are your gods, Israel. These are the ones that brought you out. I'm empowered as long as they're there. That's an image of the devil. As long as those altars are in your life, he is empowered to take you down. Are you with me? Huh? That is the truth. What even when you get saved, if you have stuff in your life you have not dealt with, those things are hunting you. This is why many Christians have dreams, people, there's stuff chasing them. They're like, what's chasing me? I'm a Christian. In my dream, I'm running. The last time we were under the tent, I called it out. I said, I see a, a, like a, a panther chasing people. Yeah, like, eight people came out. I said, what? I said, you saved? Yeah, I'm saved. You saved? Yeah, I'm saved. Yeah, I'm saved. Well, then why is a panther chasing you in your dream? Because the dream is the spirit realm. No, oh, it's the spirit realm. That means there's something he's chasing because he smells food. Let me help somebody. 
Let me help somebody. He smells an altar in which an incense is coming up. And he's saying, ah. Mm. Let me help somebody. Can I help somebody? All right, we're going to get to the good stuff here in a minute. Um, we're going to take you to good. We, we got to deal with this stuff. You think about it. God himself said, Satan, I curse you, the snake. Right? Because it's a twofold story. I curse you and on your belly you shall crawl. And then what he said, you shall eat the what? The, somebody say the dust. the dust. Why would he tell the snake to eat dust when he just made you from dust? Well, that sounds like a messed up thing. Hold on. Hold on. The snake get to eat dust, but God, you just pulled us out of the dust. That means we are food for the devil. Which is why he says you must be a new creature. In Christ Jesus, that we don't yield to the things of the flesh. But let me help you. The things of the flesh is not the meat on your bones. We say, oh, flesh, that's this thing out here that needs to lose weight, that needs to be a little stronger, tighter, you know, a little more limbo. That's not what the Bible's talking about. It's talking about the soul man. Oh, because the suit houses the soul and the suit only does what the soul wants. If the soul is hungry, y'all already left to go eat and we still preaching. The soul like mm, my body hungry uh, and your body's like, no, I ain't. What you talking about? I'm, I'm good. I got enough right here. <laughs> and the soul's like, mm, no, we hungry. And the body's like, no, look, I got something back here. We don't need to eat. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a pull it up tight. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, the soul, but, the, but the soul be like, no, no, you know, you know, you yeah, hadn't eaten in three hours. You know, come on. And your like, body's like, no, I know we ate three hours ago. We don't need to eat no more. Come on now. So it's like, no, I'm in charge here. And so when God said, you eat the dust of the ground, I wonder what he was talking about. He was warning us, be careful, don't be food for the devil. That's why Paul said, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the soul. Ah, uh, lust of the flesh. Yeah, that's not this little... That's not this thing. This thing has no desire but to live. This thing has no desire but just simply. That's all it does. And it moves. That's all this thing does. It has no, de no desire. You know how you know? Because if you're in pain, they put you out. You don't know. You don't know what's going on because they put you out. What they do? They disconnected your soul and body. Like yeah. the whole transformation of information. Right. And you awake, they do an open surgery and you're awake. Like, eh, what's going on? Wow. Yeah, this is my insides. Oh my God. How come I don't feel nothing? That's good. Am I helping somebody? Yeah. So the scripture's not talking about this, this thing. This thing ain't nothing but a suit. Talking about the soul. So the altars are connected to the soul. That's why the Bible says renew that thing. Disconnect it. Tear down the altars of Baal. What is Baal? Babylon. The world's way of doing things. Which is Babylon. The place of Babel. Which is the world system. Tear down the altars of Baal and build the altars of God. Where? In your soul. Mm, this should bring a whole new meaning about renew your mind. <laughs> By the word of God. Why? You're tearing down the altars of Baal. The decision making, the choices, the ideas, the ideologies that have been put in your soul. What we think, what we understand. Mm, how can this guy say to them? These two gods are the gods that brought you out of Egypt. How? If it wasn't in their soul already. 
it triggered something that was already in their soul. Oh, I, I, what? And the soul, the battle in the soul is, is in the spirit. We got to understand this. The devil ain't fighting your spirit no more. He can't fight your spirit. How is the devil going to fight God? Your spirit empowered by the spirit. How the devil going to fight God? The last time he tried that, God went, <sighs> and Jesus said, I saw the Satan like lightning. Bam. And all God did was <sighs> take a breath. How the devil going to fight God and God in you? So he must be fighting something else. I wonder how Christians depressed because it's in their soul. When you, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength and in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Which, where is the presence of the Lord? Somebody say in the ark. Where's the ark? I uh, dare you. Go ahead. Touch your belly. Say this is the ark. This is the ark. The ark of the covenant has now moved inside you and the presence of the Lord is inside of you. He said, I'll write my laws upon your heart. And the last place the laws went were into the ark. So it's not your spirit. We feed your spirit. You, you, your spirit getting fed. Uh, but are you dealing with the altars that are in your soul? Because this is the issue. This is what it comes down to. And we see it all throughout the Old Testament. We just not have, have not made the connection between the natural and ourself. Somebody say, help me, Lord. So he cried out against the, uh, 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 against the altars by the word of the Lord and said, O oh, altar, altar, thus says the Lord, behold. Uh-oh. Sounds like a prophecy. Behold a child. Huh. Josiah by name shall be born to the house of David Who and on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you and men's bones shall be burned on you Ooh. why do you burn the bones on the altar of the wicked priests uh, why the bones Joseph, he told his children, he said, you shall not leave my bones in Egypt. Don't leave my bones in Egypt. Carry them with you out of Egypt into the promised land. Why were they needing to carry the bones out of Egypt? Naturally, the bones are the very essence of life is in the center of your bones. This is why the scripture says that the word of the Lord is the double-edged sword that cuts asunder all the way, spirit, soul, body, into the bone marrow. Into the bone marrow, which is the life structure of the body. Because out of the marrow comes the life, comes the bones, comes the structure, comes everything else. In other words, let's get down to the deepest DNA and burn those bones. This is why the Bible calls us to be adopted. Oh, don't get mad at me. Some people get mad at me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because when I say this, they get, you know, family issues. Family, uh, you know, my God, uh, my God, you telling me to leave my mom and daddy? No, I didn't tell you to leave your mom and daddy. I told you to leave their name and be adopted in Christ. Because the DNA is in your bones. How does the devil trace it to you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on. You don't even know your ancestors. But your ancestors know you. It's through your bones. It's through the DNA in your life. It is an attachment. In fact, even in scripture, you can attach Jesus all the way back through the Old Testament. Through DNA. Am I helping somebody yet? Why am I saying all this? Because we must understand that there are things been set up in our life. Generations ago, even in our lifetime that affect us today 
Listen, a, a, a poverty mentality keep you broke. How, how do we, I know, I know Pastor Dad over here, he preached so much on finances. Because he was teaching you not to have a poverty mentality. But you can hear it, hear it, and don't do nothing about it. And how did he teach you how to break the spirit of poverty? Put your money on the altar. Put your money on the altar. When you bring that to God, you are building an altar to God greater than the spirit of poverty. Why money? Because money is attached to your soul. And the way a man thinks, so is he. So what's in your soul is what you produce. Oh. But now that you're in Christ, you must be spirit led. Which means you have to break the soul man down, which are where the altars are. Am I helping somebody? All right, let me come back in here. Let's go look at Josiah. Somebody say, look at Josiah. Yeah. Let's go look here. Are you, are you still with me? Are you receiving something yet? Mm, 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 mm. Let's go to 2 Kings. Chapter 20, let's look at 22 first. 2 Kings 22. It says, Josiah was eight years old. Verse 1, I mean, chapter 22, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. He reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedediah, the daughter of Adadiah, of this gentleman. And he did what was right in the sight. Somebody say, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Watch this. And he walked in all the ways of his father David. Hold on a second. How is David his father? Huh. How is David his father? I thought Solomon was the son of David. How does Josiah claim to be the father, uh, David my father? Huh. Somebody say spiritual father. Spiritual. Somebody say spiritual father. It wasn't his natural father, but by the realm of the spirit, he connected yes. to the lineage of David, to the marrow of David, to the heart of David. He said, I'm going to be a David like my father. Amen. It's all part of breaking the altars. You have to break family lineages. Mm? Somebody say, I'm adopted. I got a new family. Yeah. And, and says, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Amen. Now let's look here because we're going to read down. And then he, he, he goes on just for the sake of time. Uh, in the 18th year, now it came to pass the 18th year of King Josiah, the king, the king sent Shaphan the scribe, the son of Azalah. Boy, they got a lot of sons and fathers. Mm -mm. to the house of the Lord, saying, go up, Hilkiah, to the high priest, that he may count the money and go on and on. Anyway, so he goes to the temple, amen? Verse 8, then Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. Hold on a second. You, is it a surprise to find the Bible in church? That's shocking. I have found the book of the law. In the house of God. That's shocking to find a Bible in church in there. Oh, that's not good. That means we need to find the word in the house of God. Too many stories. Not enough word. It said, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan and he read it. So Shaphan the scribe went to the king bringing the king word, saying, your servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and had delivered into the hands of those who do the work and the overseers. And, the, and then, verse 10, then Shaphan the scribe showed the king the saying, saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Now watch this. Now what happened when the king heard the words of the book of the law, that he tore his clothes. When we hear the truth, it'll cause you to rip something up. I'm telling you, when you hear the truth and you know the truth right there, it causes you to rip stuff up. I want my freedom. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to get my freedom. Ain't no devil going to hold me back. Ain't no altar going to hold me back. Ain't no circumstance going to hold me back. I'm coming here to tear something up. 
But you can't tear nothing up unless you know the word of the Lord. I find it interesting because the prophet prophesied in 1 King 13 that Josiah was coming. Verse 12 said, then the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and the son of Shephar and all these gentlemen. And he said, verse 13, go inquire of the Lord for me, for the people and, and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is aroused against us because what? Our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning it. Now, listen, we know we have Jesus today. Amen. And Jesus said, come follow me. We know we have the writings of Paul, but Paul said, follow me. Are you with me? As I follow Christ, what is Christ? The ways that Jesus did thing, come follow me. Are you with me? So part of breaking altars is breaking habits, breaking patterns, breaking ways of doing things to break out of the old. When you used to get mad, you didn't have no money. Now you run, sow a seed. That's breaking altars. Oh, are you with me? When, when you used to get a cough, <laughs> you'd be like, I got to go to the doctor. Now you say, ah, Lord, I reject that thing right now. That's part of breaking altars. It's rising up in you and changing some things. And that's where your freedom is at. Amen. But he's saying the Lord is very angry because their fathers didn't obey the words of the book to do according to all that was written in it. Are you with me? Mm. So this means in reality, you fight things and we fight things as people because of what has happened in our lifetime. What has happened in our childhood. Listen, I prayed for a gentleman yesterday. I'm not going to say his name. I prayed for him. I looked at him. I said, ah, when you were a certain age, you were, you were abused. And that's why you have the tendencies you have. That you don't know who you are, a man or a woman. He looked at me and said, yes, sir. I said, good. I call you a man of God. Because I'm going to break that thing in your life. Are you with me? That's not a social issue. That's a spiritual issue. That builds an altar in the soul. Uh, it's not an emotional issue like, oh, we, you know, they're people. No, they're broken. Right. Just like some of us broken because of what we've been through in our life. And there are altars at that broken place. We must break those altars. Somebody say break the altars. Oh, are we learning some more? Amen. So he says in uh, verse, verse 15, uh, then she said to them, thus says the Lord God of Israel, tell the man who, who sent you to me, thus says the Lord, behold, I will bring calamity on this place and on all the inhabitants, all the words of the book, which the king of Judah has read because they have forsaken me, burn incense to what other gods that they may provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Now, let me let me stop. you. God ain't mad at us. We, we got to know this. God ain't mad at us. God loves us enough, though. To help us understand, it's not that God's mad. It's that we get involved in stuff we don't understand because there is a realm of the spirit we haven't understood. Can I give you a nugget? <laughs> there was people before Adam. Can I give you a nugget? There were people before Adam. They weren't made in the image of God, but they were people. In other words, the world is older than you think. You were birthed in an old world. Oh. And we're called by God to dominate. And when you don't dominate, those things that were in the old world choose to dominate you. This is the things we don't understand and we don't know that we need to know that we're not just here to make babies, to have a house, to get a job. You know what I'm saying? To get married and be like, I'm happy now. No, that's not why you were born. You were born to live like God on the earth. And so when we offer to other gods, we are disgracing who we are. And the enemy take opportunity. Let me give it to you like this. Jesus could not die. Tell your neighbor, Jesus could not die. How much time, how much time do I got? Help me, help me, help me. I just want to keep me, keep me on track, okay? Because I got a lot, and I want to make sure I give you what I got. I want to keep you all day. But listen to me here. Are you, are you okay with me? Yes. But listen to this. Am I, are you learning? Yes. Jesus said, no man take my life. I give it. Now, hold on. Who took it? When he gave it, who took it? 
the devil willingly took his life. Because he gave it. Because he gave it. When you give up stuff because you don't know any better, you have just turned it over to the devil. Because what you don't know will destroy you. And so we give up room. We give up space. We give up thoughts that should belong to God that actually the devil said, I'll take it. For whatever space you leave, the devil will take that space. Are you with me? So the more we understand about these realms that we live in, the mightier we become. The stronger we become. The more effective we become. Huh? The more healed, the more well, the more money, the more power, the more authority, the more peace. There ain't no way the devil steal your peace, but you give it away. Let me, let me help somebody. You know why you give your peace away? Because you're getting an argument. And you get in an argument because you want to prove you're right. As soon as you choose to prove you're right, you just gave your peace to the devil. And like, oh, I don't know. I lost my peace. No, you didn't lose your peace. You gave it away. Uh, well, I, I lost my joy. How do you lose your joy when it's right here? You gave your joy up. You got to understand these altars are places where meeting, where transfers take place. Uh, that's why Jesus was uh, the door on the cross that was on the altar because a transfer was taking place. An entry into another realm was taking place. It was at the altar. So when we have altars in our life and they're in the soul, tell your neighbor, they're in the soul. They're in the soul. They affect everything in our life. For if that's the way a man thinketh, so is he. But why do you think the way you think? Because there's been an altar that was built. And they must be torn down. Are you here? So pay attention. Listen, when you, when you really, um, when I went to Haiti, I learned quite a bit. And then when I went to Jamaica, I learned some more. <laughs> so when I went to these islands that God sent me to, and I didn't know why God was sending me to the islands, but I went, you know. And pastor used to always say, that's for you, son, not for me. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, do they got a five-star hotel? I said, I don't think so. He said, ah, you can go for me. I said, all right, Pastor, I'll go for you. <laughs> but when I went, I learned a lot. On that side of what the people believe. I remember, watch this, and I don't know if I told the story. I told it the other day, but I'll tell it again. I went in Haiti, and there was a field. And I, we were walking through the beach, you know, and the beach, beautiful black sand. Well, kind of, it was beautiful black sand, but the beach was a mess. But it was beautiful underneath the mess. And we were walking the beach, you know, we're like, I'm like, wow, man, this is amazing. And I said, why, 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 what's wrong with the beach area? He said, all the poor people live on the beach. I said, why? In America, all the rich people live on the beach. Why is in Haiti all the poor people live on the beach and all the rich people live in the mountains? They say, because everything flows downhill. I said, well, that makes sense, Lord Jesus. So then we were going to a church, so we were walking the beach to go to a church, went down, and we went through this field, and I was like, man, why can't we cut through here? He said, don't go through there, that's the witch's land. I said, the witch's land? I said, why is it the witch's land? He said, because when they do offerings and stuff, people come and bring money and put it in the property. I said, and you broke? You're broke with all that money sitting in the field. I don't know about you. If money was sitting in the field, you'd be looking at it. Don't touch it. It's a witch's money. I said, which who? <laughs> which witch? <laughs> they got that money out there rotting and you starving. Why? Because in your soul, there's an altar built to fear the witch. <laughs> when she should fear you or he should fear you. Because you got an altar built in your mentality that makes you afraid of those type of things when God has empowered you. But until that altar is broken, you'll never reach that money that's in the field. Or they'll never come bring it to you. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Mm. Ha brosho ba ba ba. Hey, uh, somebody receiving something now, huh? Habrushka. Amen. Somebody say, break them altars. Break them altars. Yeah, altars produce mentalities, which produce strongholds. I said, altars produce mentalities that produce strongholds. A devil cannot become a stronghold into your life, into your family, unless there is an altar that produces a mentality. 
See, the altar they would bring consistently, consistently in sacrifice to the Lord. It was a consistent sacrificing to God, which produced an altar. So the consistent way you think is where that altar's at. And because of the consistent thinking that certain way, a stronghold comes to stand on that altar. So the way you think does affect you. But it's not just natural, it's spiritual. I said it's spiritual. Amen. Let me read here. I just don't want to see verse. Um, where were we? Where did we leave off? Somebody got that? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We left off at 16. Let's see. Uh, verse, let's, let's look at verse, uh, okay, verse 16. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will bring calamity on this place and on the inhabitants of all the, all, uh, all the words of the book which the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to their other gods, and that they may provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be aroused against this place, shall not be quenched, but as for Watch this. But as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, in this manner you shall speak to him. Are you ready for what needs to come to your ears now? Thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before the Lord. When you heard what I spoke, uh, when you heard what I spoke, See, what is going to help is when we hear what is spoken and it pricks our heart that we go, wait a minute. Ah, I felt that. I need to deal with this thing. Amen? Humility and a tender heart. Humility and a tender heart. If we don't come humbly and have a tender heart to hear what God is saying, those altars will stay there and your children will have to break them. Mm. And he says, so, uh, uh, let's see. It says, uh, thank you, love. Because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spoke against this place and against the inhabitants, that they would become a desolation and a curse. And what? You have torn your clothes and wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. Hmm. What well, says, surely, therefore, I will gather you to your fathers at Wait, which father? Huh. Remember what he said? He said, uh, Josiah, son of David. <laughs> uh, he's going to be right there with David. Uh, he said, says, spiritual father, I will gather you to your fathers and you shall be gathered to your grave. What? What? Uh, say it loud. In peace. And your eyes shall what? Not see. Somebody say not see. All the calamity. Which I'll bring on this place. In other words, when you humble yourself and rip something, I'm talking about tearing mentalities, tearing the altars down, busting things. No, that's not how we do it. We don't do it like that no more. That's the way grandmama did it, but we ain't grandmama. That's the way grandpa used to do it, but we don't do it like that. We do it like the word says. You start tearing down the altars. And when you do that, the Bible says you will not see calamity. And you'll go to your grave in peace. Oh, uh, It is not for you to see calamity. That's not God's design. That's not God's desire. God's desire is for you to live a life of peace. But who disturbs your peace? The enemy comes to take it to see if you're willing to give it up. Who disturbed your money? The devil wants to steal your money. He wants to steal everything from you. Rob your blind. But the only way he works is if he has a root or a hook or an altar. Are you here now? Are you receiving some understanding on this thing? What I've been mentioning, talking about the two altars. See, we can have two altars. We can have an altar in our spirit to God and an altar to the enemy in our soul. <sighs> this is why Paul said, get rid of that old mind. Because in that old mind is where these altars are established and where these strongholds keep you. Paul 
Paul said, why do I do the things I don't want to do and the, uh, the things I want to do I can't do? And then he said, oh, wretched man I am. Ah, well, thanks be unto God for the Lord Jesus Christ who has delivered me and made me free. But Paul knew that though he was free in spirit here, was he free in his soul? Because the one thing that's not born again is your soul. Somebody say my soul. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. That's the thing that must be born again. Day by day, every time you bump up against a mindset, every time you bump up against an altar that does not belong to God, am I trying to help somebody? In other words, when you find yourself feeling and thinking a way that ain't God, there's an altar. You have to break that thing. We, we want breakthrough, but we don't know what breakthrough is. Destroying the altars, building the altars to God. Those are mentalities. When you find yourself thinking a certain way, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop, stop, stop. What, what, what is this? Who is that? What is that about? That's not me. That's not me. That's why the Bible says, cast down imaginations. Everything that exalts itself above the who? Oh. You're knowing of God. What you know of God, anything that tells you you're not, kill it. Anything that wants to get you to participate, we kill that thing. Shut that thing down. Break that thing. And what you'll discover is that has been placed in your life somewhere as an altar. Amen. I heard a man of God say one time, he said, I was preaching in a meeting. He said, I, was, I felt the anointing so strong. He said, is there any witches in the house? <laughs> he said, have the church stood up. <laughs> he said, ah, oh, yeah, shakabaya. He said, ah, oh, listen, listen, I'm not saying you, 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 they call you a witch. I'm saying you're a physically practicing witch. He said, so sit down and those that are physically practicing, stand up. He said, about the same amount stood up. He said, all right, glory to God. He said, you come here. <laughs> he said, I called a witch out, tell her, come here. Stand right here. He said, tell me what you do. She said, we wait for people to pass through the road. And we conjure up something to kill them. And we drink the blood. I know y'all don't want to hear this. Because you think it don't happen. Y'all listen to me. Y'all better hear me. The devil tried to kill my wife. He spilled her blood. He tried to make that an altar to himself. But the Lord showed up. Yeah. But the Lord showed up. I discovered later, man of God, that the devil wanted to make an altar. Because somebody in her family had turned them all over to the devil out of hatred. And was trying to kill the children one by one by one. But it was too late. God had already come into our life. But because of what we didn't know, she still went through the wreck. She still went through the suffering. We take it uh, as a learning experience today. But you'll never see us wreck again. I'll never see you wreck again. You will not go out by a correct. Your blood will not be spilled. For his blood has been spilled. Y'all know there are devil that sit at 146 and, 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 and NASA Road 1. You know every weekend that devil trying to spill blood. There is a witch tied to that devil. It's not just infrastructure. There wasn't no infrastructure in the Bible. Like, here's a red light for the donkeys. They got to stop. There wasn't no infrastructure. But the Bible says you shall not see calamity. Without infrastructure, you still won't see calamity. Ushara. So that, that we said, yeah, we wait for blood to be spilled. We conjure and cause accidents for blood to be spilled. We go drink the blood. He said, yeah, I love the man of God. He said, what do you do when a man like me come? He said, we run. That's it. That's it. That's it. I said, what they do when you show up? They run. Yeah. 
what they do when you show up, huh? They run. They run. When you walk in, they clear the road. When you show up, they clear the road. When the power of God is on your life and there's nothing that Satan has in you, they clear a path. When they tried to stone Jesus and they gathered around to throw him off a cliff, the Bible says there was a path made right through the people. Oh, yeah. He walked right through them. I always say, I don't know about you, you go to the mall, you can't walk on the left side because everybody coming. I'm talking about a real packed night. You know, you, you, you got to try to, you know, traffic flow, get to the right side of the wall. Ah, Jesus said, ah, I'll walk right through. Never touched them. It'll never touch you. I said, it'll never touch you. I prophesy, it'll never touch you. It'll never touch you. It'll never touch you. I curse every altar that has been built in your mind. So, I curse it. I declare, it'll never touch you. It'll never touch you. It'll never touch you. It'll never touch you. It won't touch you. It won't touch you. I said, it won't touch you. Because the devil will have nothing to get to you with. Ooh. hide yourself in the Lord that's not just a statement that's a doing somebody say I get in Christ I get inside of him that's not a statement that's a doing huh? Moses said what Moses said what Moses said what Ah, hey, take the lamb sacrifice the lamb huh? take hyssop dip the hyssop in the blood Put it over the doorpost. Get somebody say get in. Somebody say get in. Get in. Because there's gonna be a battle between two altars tonight. I don't think you understood me. Moses knew the power of an altar because how he met God was at a burning bush, an altar. And he said, Take off thy shoes, Moses, for you are on holy ground. Ah, he met Moses at an altar. And Moses knew the power of an altar because an altar changed his life. I said, An altar changed his life. And so when he went to battle with Pharaoh, he knew he had a more powerful altar than Pharaoh ever made. Ooh, can I help somebody? Just stay right there. Don't, don't sit down. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Because we're about to, we about to, we about to, we It was altar against altar. It was altar against altar. It was altar, the God of Moses against Pharaoh, God of earth. Altar against altar. Are you here? Yeah. Ah. And then and then Moses, you know, the devil tried to negotiate with Moses. Tell your neighbor, don't ever negotiate with the devil. Don't negotiate. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Tell your neighbor, stand your ground. Don't negotiate. Don't negotiate with the devil. He kept telling Moses, well, well, just take a few, leave the children, do this, you know, take, take this, go like, go like this, go like that. Telling you how you supposed to go. Ain't that like the devil today? Telling you what kind of car you can buy. Telling you what kind of house you can buy. Telling you where you can live. Just like the devil today. Only take a little bit. Don't take it all. I'll give you some, but keep... Uh, just like the devil today. And we tend to negotiate with the devil. But Moses said, I ain't negotiating with you, Pharaoh. Let me tell you what about to happen. I wish you put your hand in the air and prophesy that I'm going to tell you what about to happen. I'm coming out by fire. And by power, I'm walking out today. Walking out today. Yeah. Yeah. So Moses, I ain't going to negotiate with you. It's on my terms and my terms alone because my terms came into my ear when God spoke to me. That's the word in your hand. That's the terms of the Lord for your life. But until you stand your ground and stop negotiating with him and break that power, he will not let you go. Say, I'm, I'm gone already. 
I'm gone already. I'm gone already. So it was altar against altar. And Moses said, look, if you don't bow down to this altar, this is what's going to happen. See, that's a boldness in you. Devil, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. If you don't let my children go, I, there'll be 50 people saved, healed before this night is over. If you don't let my daughter go, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to go find a bunch of young girls and get them delivered, get them on fire, fill them with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to get them walking in power and you're going to be so mad you touch my daughter. Altar against altar. That's how you handle that. You don't go, oh, look at my children, my family, oh my God. No, no, no. That is the devil trying to negotiate with you. I'll let you go to church, but I want your children. I'll let you go to church, but I want your marriage. Ah, no, I'm going to start a marriage seminar right now. Touch my marriage once again. I'm going to go find married people. Can I pray for you? 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 Can I pray for your marriage? Can I lay hands on you? Can I lay hands on your husband? Devil, you want to touch my marriage? I'm going to touch your kingdom. Altar against altar. You got to tear some things down. That's where your victory's at. That's how you win. Moses knew. I'm not going to bow to you, Pharaoh. My God is greater. I'm coming at you. You want to come at me? I'm coming at you. You cannot back down. It's altar against altar. And God proved the altar that you have been placed on is greater than any demonic altar. Somebody say, I receive. I say, say, I receive. Somebody say, I take it by force. I take it by power. I take it by fire. I receive. So much to the point that Moses like, I ain't getting down. I ain't backing off. I don't care what you do. You want to put more work on me? Ah, I'm going to break you anyway. Ah, you want to try to do this and do that? I'm going to break you anyway. Ah, somebody say persistence. That's power. Don't quit. Don't give up. Stand in his face and speak the word of the Lord. I'll not go down. I ain't going out. I'm going up. I'm coming up higher. And whatever the devil is touching on your life, you better run and find somebody and lay hands on them. Yes, yes, yes. I remember when the devil tried to put cancer on my wife. She said, she said, mm, I said, mm, we, ain't, we ain't received none of that. Mm -mm, ain't going to happen. I curse that thing. I pray. God, God, we pray. We sought the Lord. Lord, what you want to do? We're going to do it this way. We're going to do it that way. How? Because there is one thing going to happen. Uh, she shall live and not die. Oh, you hear me? Listen to me. I understand. Don't get nervous. Uh, I understand. But in that place, let me tell you, people started calling her. Ah, I've been diagnosed with cancer. She said, come here, let me pray for you. And while she was praying, guess what? The devil was saying, why, why are you praying? Because you got it. She said, I ain't got it. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got it. Yeah, doctor call you whatever you want to call you, but I ain't got it. And you find people that claim, oh, man, you know, I feel, I'm, mm, let me pray for you. Uh, what are you doing? Altar against altar. Uh, you, 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 the doctor tried to say you got something you better find somebody else in the uh, you better find somebody else in the room be like hey what did the doctor tell you you have oh he, he okay alright that's you I'm looking for you can I pray for you I curse it the day you decide to negotiate is the day you lose your peace it's the day you lose your house you lose your family you lose your children when you negotiate with the devil you go backwards you don't go forward altar against altar and there's an altar in your spirit to overpower every altar that is ever put in your soul. But you must be willing to hear. When Josiah heard the word, he lamented. He was like, oh my God, we have missed it. Father, ha, ah, what do you want me to do? Call the prophet. What does the prophet have to say? The prophet has to say this. Okay, done. Let's do it. That's what we need to do. Because once we do that, ah, I'm free. And he knew that. The Bible says for the second time, he fulfilled the word of the Lord. He went and destroyed altar after altar. And he burned the bones of the men who were sacrificing unto false gods. He burned them on the altar in which they were using to sacrifice. He said, are you going to sacrifice to those gods? I'm going to burn you on that altar. See, we're not willing to go that far. The only thing he didn't touch was the bones of the prophets. He said, ah, this is the prophet that prophesied I was coming. Leave his bones in peace. 
but everyone else's bones that are up here on this mountain, eh, we're going to burn it on the altar. Yes. Burn them to ashes. There'll be no more memory of the wickedness that they did. Mm. <laughs> Lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, be serious now. Be serious. These are serious things in serious times. We got to know who we are in Christ Jesus. Identify yourself at that cross. And then identify yourself at the resurrection. Knowing that you're no longer a lamb, but a lion you are. And a lion doesn't take no for an answer. Ah. And a lion doesn't negotiate. If he wants that meal, he's going to take that meal. And you can't say nothing about it. Mm. Somebody say, I take what belongs to me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Come on, let's just worship the Lord real Just for a moment, worship the Lord. Mm. Come on. Worship the Lord now. Just worship, 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 worship. Come on, just worship. There is no one like you. You are holy, holy. And there is no one like you. You are holy, holy.
on, just raise your hands today. Just worship him. Allow him to touch you even greater today. Father God, we just honor you, Lord, for you are so holy. You are almighty, Father. Yes, Lord, you are holy. Yes. Lord God Come on, we open up the altar. You need a touch from the Lord today. Just come to the front, Father God. We just honor you. We're here, Lord. Yes. Holy. Lord God Almighty. Those that are joining us, if you need a touch from the Lord right where you are, just raise your hand. In Jesus' name, let the fire fall on you where you are. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't leave without getting the touch today. Come on, the altars are open. Jesus is here. Holy. Yes. Holy. Just one glance of your eyes, and my whole world stays. My whole world stays. So I live only to seek your face. I refuse to go. You God, without your presence, oh, let us see your face today, God. Let us see your face today, God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, you worthy, 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 worthy. Holy, yeah. holy. Come on, just sing to Him. Holy, we go to a deeper place today, Lord God. Lift your hands. 
Right now, before you get home, you might discover that all your debts have been paid off. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Somebody meets you already. Somebody's meeting you already. I feel you when you walked up here. Somebody in the spirit meeting you right here. I feel the Holy Ghost just meet you. Tell your neighbor, confront some altars. Don't be, don't be afraid of the enemy. Uh, confront some altars. Yeah, break them things. Uh, break them things. Break them things. Your freedom is in the breaking of that. Uh, your freedom is in the breaking of that. I dare somebody just jump a little bit, jump a little bit. Just, just go ahead, just jump a little bit. I, I dare you just jump, 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 jump. Hey, 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 hey. Aratanaba, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, I dare you jump a little bit. Hey, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's the Holy Ghost. coming down I, I see the walls like Jericho falling like falling like being pressed down in the shout 
being pressed down like glory hallelujah that that was walled up around your life that was walled up that you couldn't get to there are people you couldn't get to because they're walled up in jericho ah, but god is doing something right now i feel god pressing walls down as we say hallelujah somebody say hallelujah somebody say hallelujah 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 yo yo well, i just i just got to tell you there are family members that you haven't been able to get to i don't know what this means to you but just just hear me out if i'm wrong just tell me you're wrong man of god but you know just shout you know when it's happening <sighs> but i see family member on the other side of the wall i see family in fact i see three one two three i see i see three people family on the other side of the wall and the walls of Jericho must come down because there must be a reuniting. There, there must be a, a reunion. Hey, Mashkeba. No, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I see three. Why do I see? I see you standing. I see a wall. I see three on the other side. I see three on the other side. Three, three people. Three people on the other side. And they're family. There's something to do with family. They're stuck on the other side of the wall. And it's like the enemy has kept them there, but you somehow got out. And that God is breaking a wall down so that you can reunite with them. There's some form of reuniting. Do you have sisters or brothers? I do. How many? I have two. Now, two sisters left. Uh-huh. And then I have two daughters. Oh, you have two sisters left. But, but where's it? Uh, what do you mean left? I mean, I, I still have two sisters. You still have two sisters living. How many did you have? I had five. You had five. Uh -huh. And you have two sisters living. Right. Two sisters living. Wow, okay. All right, keep talking to me. I have two daughters. And you have two daughters. Two daughters. Ah. And I have one daughter that's in this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mama Bashi. Mama Neka. Okay. And yeah, and the other one is, 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 is not with you like like with you like walking with you with the lord no. and so there's two but then who's the third one you have two daughters well, the two daughters girls does she have? She has two daughters. There they are. Somebody say there they are. Somebody say there they are. That's the three. That's the three I'm looking for. See why you gotta you gotta talk to me because what I see I don't always understand I have to investigate because now we understand what God's talking about. They're walled up in Jericho. Yes they are walled up. Yes they are. Yes. Wow. But what did I say? I felt the walls being pressed down, falling down, yes. crumbling. Yes. Oh, I feel that in my bones now. You see, in other words, what God is dealing with is them three. Your daughter and her two daughters. And walled up in Jericho. But it's your... It's your shout. It's your dance. It's your freedom. Your freedom. That begins to tear them things down. Shh, stop a minute. Just stop. I cursed that spirit that has captured your daughter in the mighty name of Jesus. Loose her. I 
I say to you, there shall be a reunion. Do I know you? No. 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 Uh, Why God picked three specific people behind the wall? Only God knows. And if God knows. But what I said before we got there was there is a reunion, a reuniting with three. And the walls are coming down. Let me see your hand. The Bible says touch and agree. And it shall be fire. Uh, lift your hands quick. Just lift your hands. Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Can I pray for you, sister? Yes, ma'am, if I can pray for you. No, don't, 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 don't go nowhere. Yeah, just bring her right there. No, no, no. Bring her right here. Somebody just lift your hands and just worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, just let the Lord do his work right now. He's doing it. I feel him doing it. I feel him doing it. Yes. He's doing something in you right now. Bulaka. Just lift your hands. Just don't play. Just sing soft. Right there, just like that. Church, we're in a different place. The Lord is in this room. Let him touch you. We're in a different realm. Let him heal you. Yield to the Holy Ghost, church. Yield to the Holy Ghost. Who, who, has, who has bladder issues? Somebody have a bladder issue. It's like you, you have a bladder issue. Like you don't go to the restroom regularly. Mm. 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 Restroom regularly. Uh, y'all don't want to. Y'all don't want to. Somebody like oh, I, it's normal to me. No, it ain't normal. Like you don't go to the restroom regularly. Something, something ain't working in the bladder. Who is that? I'm sorry. Uh, why, why don't you walk? Why are you walking away? You go too much. You know you go too much. Why, why am I talking to you and you're standing right there, you're looking at me, and I'm asking who got a bladder issue? And then you finally say, I go too much. Don't be ashamed of that. There should be a regularity in your life. You shall not see calamity. You shall not see calamity. A regularity. Regular, which is normal. You go too much, there's something ain't right. Something's out of alignment. There, it left you. Ooh. You're fine. Ooh. 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 Oh, somebody say, Lord. You'll discover what's been disturbing you. You'll be, you'll you discover what's been disturbing you has now left you. <laughs> Mighty God. Jesus, worship you. Okay. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I bless everyone. Can I pray for you, sister? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't know y'all, so 
I just want to pray for who God gives me to pray for. Yeah, and if I haven't seen you, come, come, come. Go ahead, just receive it. You're standing right there, but I see the angel of the Lord right behind you. There's you in stripes. You're right there. Just receive that. There is an anointing all behind you. That's the angel of the Lord. He's standing there. You're raising your hands, and he's, he's worshiping the Lord behind you. There is a fire there. Just receive that touch touch now yeah just take it oh my god Ooh. touch take it take it take it take it stop holding it take it take it take it ah just receive that joy there's joy Ooh. oh just bless him just bless the lord Oh, he's doing it. He's doing it. Fire! My God, my God, my God. Every altar, I curse it in Jesus' name. Every hurt, every disappointment, every brokenness, I curse it broken now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come here, Pastor. Come here. Pastor, don't walk. Come with me. Come with me, Pastor. Come, Come with me. Come here. Give me the other hand. Come with me. You're worthy, worthy, worthy. You're worthy, 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 Jesus. Father, we thank you for the Holy Ghost that is here now, present. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for us and be the ultimate sacrifice in our life. We thank you. Thank you that you rose him from the dead. And you gave us rights to become sons of God. Thank you, Lord. I bless everyone in this place and those watching by internet. I bless this house. I bless this ministry. We release the grace, the apostolic grace upon this house. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let everything that ain't been working in there work today. What a gruba, eranda, whatever hasn't been working works today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I bless you. Lift your hand. Let me just bless you. And I'm going to give the mic to Pastor so he can do what he do. Oh, yeah. Come on, Pastor. Lift Let's lift our hands. Right there to the people. Oh, just get your heart ready right now. God, God about to do something. He's doing something right now. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I let your fire, oh God, descend upon your people and rest on them as in the book of Acts. In Jesus' name, let this day, oh God, be a day of signs, wonders, miracles. Let the supernatural become reality to the sons of God that are in this house today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You know, somebody's dog just got healed. I don't know who that was. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know who that was. You know, in the crazy. I said, God, why you show me a dog? He said, I just healed somebody's dog. Whatever wasn't working. Hey, it were work, work. Yeah. <laughs> hey, somebody dog healed. I don't know who I, somebody dog got healed here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. In Jesus' name. I don't know who that was. Help me, help me, help me, help me. All right. Ooh. Okay, I, I don't know. We, we love you. We bless. <laughs> Somebody better receive some joy. <laughs> Somebody better receive some joy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, just receive some joy. Just receive some joy. Just receive some joy. Just receive some joy. Just receive. Receive some joy. I said, take some joy. Take Holy Ghost joy. God, y'all, y'all, we got to help. We got to help. Go ahead, take some joy. 
Take some joy. Receive some joy. Open up your mouth. Drink the joy. Drink the joy. Drink the joy. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to go. Oh, y'all rush cut out of you. Somebody better get this mic. We're going we're gonna to be here. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, man of God. Uh, you, you know that thing left you. I, I don't know. I've seen that thing like a wind. <laughs> Leave you. Dance like you were dancing earlier. <laughs> hey! Get old Shababaye. Woo! Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know. I don't know. It's funny. Uh, you know, the Holy Ghost got a personality, and I think he has a sense of humor. And, you know, I try to, I'm a catcher. I'm a serious catcher. And uh, I try to stay away, you know. I, but I'm, then I'm also, I'm, almost, I'm also greedy in the realm of the spirit. You know, I, I, I'll catch as much as you throw. You know, when, when, when Pastor was alive, I used to just bump into him and hit him. When I'd get near him, I'd just bump into him and hit him. But I was catching what he had on him. So uh, I don't know how I keep winding up with this, but uh, there's really nothing else to be said. But uh, the fire of the Holy Ghost is up in here today. Yeah. And uh, just in case anybody came here with something going on with them, the Holy Ghost and fire has come through here and, 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 and swept this place out. Whatever you got going on with you, nail it to the cross. Nail it to the cross. Everything Jesus did, everything you had going on with you, Jesus took care of it when he went to the cross. It was nailed to the cross. But sometimes you got to be conscious of that. Your spirit got to alert your soul and your consciousness and your mind and your heart and your flesh to that. And whatever it is going on with you, nail it to the cross this morning. Praise God. Praise God. The Holy Ghost fire is in here this morning to burn it up. Praise God. We're going to raise an offering. I don't believe in preaching behind an apostle, but I'm just doing what he told me to do. He handed me the microphone, and the Holy Ghost wanted to confirm some things, and I got it. I try to stay away. I'm not a talker. I'd rather get a mic to somebody else, but the Holy Ghost wanted to speak that through me. Praise God. Let it burn. Let the Holy Ghost burn it up this morning. God bless you, apostle. God bless you and your family. You too, Miss Cindy. God bless y'all. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the connection that we have. God bless him, man. You know, God bless this. God bless all of y'all. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost burning up some stuff. Everybody don't understand that, but, but, but there are some of us that do. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm trying to get MC to bring the, off bring the offering tray, man. Oh, God. Praise God. Let's bring our tithe and our offering. And any seed you got you want to sow, praise God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we offer our seed. We thank you for the grace to sow. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost being on our seed, being on our tithe, opening up the windows of heaven, pouring out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive, that we'll have more to seed to sow. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then they said uh, three hallelujahs. Hallelujah. 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 And then they said, glory to God. Glory to God. Then they said, it's burn up. It's burn up. In Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus. Amen. Praise God.
Just stretch your hands this way. Father, we just thank you for all those that gave today and had a heart to give. We thank you, Father God, that they'll be blessed, Father God, a hundred times over in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, you, thank, you, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. All right, we're going to just keep it on quiet here. Get the offering on there. Close out. I think uh, Reverend White have something to say. I, I have this scripture. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that the Lord gave me last week about Pastor Sloan. And this is what the man of God is here to do for us in this ministry. It's Jeremiah 1 and 9. Is the scripture I keep hearing. It says, And the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have set this day, I, see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down. To build and to plant. The apostolic ministry is setting some things in order for us. But I do know that there are some things that we need to be healed from. The man of God is on target. He's saying some things we need to know. We got issues in our life that we don't even know why we have them. But he's bringing a true word to us today so we can set some things order in our life. God got to work for this ministry, y'all. And I believe the work that the Lord has for this ministry is going to be a deliverance ministry. And it's to be able to set people free. Because people in bondage, they're hurting, they're wounded. Their marriages are failing. Our children are going astray. But God is going to do a deliverance in this ministry so that we can help set his people free. We're talking about kingdom work. And it's not happening in the churches today. We come to church and leave the same way, day in and day out. And there's no deliverance, no peace, no life, no joy in our lives because of this. But this man, this apostle, this prophet has been sent to this house. It is God ordained. He's going to set us free in some areas. Glory to God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's going to happen. I'm going to go to the house. free. It's time for my people to be set free from the works of the enemy. It's time for us to go in and take back what the devil has stole from us. It's time to go in and take our marriages. It's time to go in and take our children. It's time to go in and take our relatives and all that belong to the Lord. It's time to take back what the devil has stole from you, saith the Lord. And I will build you up. I will build you up in this word. And you will get a deeper understanding and a greater understanding of the word. You'll get an understanding of how the enemy works. How the spirit, spiritual darkness works in this hour. But yea, in the United States, we don't even think that there is a devil. In this United States... We just uh, believe the devil is just something that just hangs around. 
But the enemy has a kingdom set up. And his kingdom is set up to destroy you. He wants to destroy us, people of God. He doesn't want us to live. He doesn't want us to have victory in our lives. He doesn't want us to have peace in our life. But God is going to teach this ministry and this life. Pastor left us a legacy. That was a legacy of victory in our lives. But it's time to take it to another level, says the Lord. And I have sent Pastor Sloan. I have sent him to this ministry to be a blessing to this ministry and to establish some things in this ministry. Receive him, said the Lord, and honor him and be a blessing to the man of God and his family. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Come on, y'all. We can do better than that. Truly, we do thank mom. We just bless them while they're on vacationing. But we thank them. we thank mom for hearing. We know she heard the Lord like we told her. This is definitely what we need. And we just thank Apostle for being open. And his beautiful wife and the family and everybody coming. Because we need this here. And like she just said, you know, in America, you're talking about they don't think there's no devil. Y'all, and look, some of y'all know they got a TV show called Lucifer. And it's so downplayed. I even talked to somebody I knew in a family, uh, family member. They tell me uh, it, it makes you even think that the devil is a good person. That's what he, he, he's an author of deception. Right there. But I thank God. And all the television shows and stuff you see now, what is it about? Everything's got supernatural stuff in it. Demonic. So you think God's not raising us up and bringing us and establishing, doing some things like you're doing now. So we just thank the Lord for them today. Let us bless you before we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon thee. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Grace, peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied unto you. You are dismissed. Let's just go. Amen.